I mean, do you want to get into that? Like the rumors and stuff, the bullshit of why they got fired, or you just want sure. to you sure. want to get into that? There's okay. no bullshit. There's no bullshit. There's a there's a there's a truth and there's a lie to everything. Okay, well let's, let's, let's get into everything. that. Let's get into that. So your uncle and your father were both fired for was it allegations or something? Uh, apparently, all right. So all right, so my uncle and my dad went in halves on this t-shirt. Con uh, not contest. <laughs> I wish it was uh, <laughs> this t-shirt business in St. Louis with the guy Nick. I know you remember him. If you don't remember him right now, Nick was the guy that always used to come to the shows in St. Louis and that area around there, and would bring all the boys' shirts. We'd all get stuff. All right. Well, he he was going broke at that the, the business he was at, but doing fine online and doing stuff at his home. He had a shop, so they basically bought half into this shop to actually get the shop back up and running. Well, apparently. Here's the real story. The okay. real story. Okay. WCW was just purchased. Mm -hmm. Uncle David had a lot of backstage stuff that he did. A lot. He handled money. He handled a lot of other things. He did a lot of things backstage. Yep. Johnny Ace was trying to get through and get in there. They tried to find a loophole, which this T-shirt bullshit is what they found. And it's because... Johnny Ace needed to get in and get David out. So was he trying to get Dave's spot or or yeah. replace it with one of his buddies? He wanted to get the old school minions out of there. Oh, okay. Right. He wanted the his, old school guys out of there. And put okay. his guys in. That's right. He wasn't one of the WCW guys. Once again, I have no problem with anybody I'm getting ready to mention. I'm just saying you're just part of the story. Yeah, but like he wanted his Arn Andersons, his Dean Malenko's, uh, you know, he wanted those guys that he brought with him, agent wise, right. and all right. that stuff in there. Right. He wanted Timmy White out. He wanted Dave Hebner out. He wanted the old guys out. That's what he wanted. The only way to get rid of David was to get rid of Earl, because uh, they were a package. They signed right. a dual contract. Their contracts were the same. Both of them on the same line, one one above the other. That's wow. how they signed their deals. Wow. So to get rid of one, you got to get rid of both. Okay. So they made up some fictitious bullshit about this T-shirt thing. Okay, so what I had heard was that it was like WWE replica, like knockoff shirts. That's what I heard. Okay. And that they were a part of it or that it was like their business or they're a bootleg in WWE merch, essentially. Okay, so okay. that's the story that you're going to hear as a fan or you're going to hear as people that don't know the end. And that's, right. that's cool. I'm not knocking right. that. Right. But here's the thing. This is not a lie. And yeah. if JR, Michael Cole, Vince, Jerry Briscoe, um, Pat Patterson, God bless his soul, he can't. But I'm just saying, if any of those guys want to step forward and let me know, because I know the fucking truth, everything they wore was made at my dad's shop that they wore on air and backstage. We made it for them. It was approved. Okay. So what the allegations were, and I'll never forget it. We were in that fucking building that's a shithole. Um, it's got the downstairs there, and it's got these all these locker rooms down there. It's in New York, I think. Um, oh, the Mid Hudson Civic Center. Yeah, 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 yeah. Poughkeepsie, so, maybe. Uh, what was it? Poughkeepsie. Was that a downstairs? It was downstairs. It was like an open concept with all these mirrors. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think that's Poughkeepsie. I think that's okay. an old ECW building. You know the building I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. The dress room's right. downstairs. Well, that's where I met with um, uh, the lawyer at the time for WWE. And he told me, because I asked him what it was all about. And he told me what it was, was him and a couple of other guys were sent to the store in St. Louis and found the shirts on the rack. Of course you found them. They're for sale. Right. You were approving them. For your talent and your own air personalities to wear them on the fucking air. Right. <clears throat> so how are they doing wrong? Right. I mean, I haven't even heard shit like they brought boxes of stuff in their trunks and they were selling them in every city and all this. What the fuck, man? They weren't broke. These right. motherfuckers weren't broke. Right. They were they were making six figures easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quarter of a million dollars a year apiece. Yeah. Like, you think they needed to sell t-shirts at the back of their fucking trunk? So that so so you put the main culprit as Johnny Ace? Absolutely, one hundred percent, man. Oh, fuck, man. 
Absolutely. That and the one, so many and the one thing, you. the one thing that was told to me from Johnny Ace, don't worry, you're golden. You've done nothing. You're not part of this. Yada, yada, yada. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, okay, you dumb motherfucker. You think my last name being Hebner and being, and see Vince was misinterpreted too. They, they put the information, the stuff that probably like you yourself or whatever heard it pissed him off, which I don't blame him. I don't blame him. It pissed him off because he thinks that the Hebners were stealing from his money. Right. which they weren't and but you think that the young green hornet brian hebner is gonna be able to stick around through all that shit ain't no fucking way no way and i knew it i knew my time was coming i lasted almost a year and i was late to work waiting on the production bus which i always rode and johnny called me in and said this is off after and you were there when the meeting when they said the first time you're late 500 the second time yes thousand dollars the third time you're late Five thousand and you're fired. Guess how many warnings one I time? got? Guess yes. Guess how many warnings I got? One zero. Zippo. Fired. I got fired. And then when they told me to call him thirty days later, he said he had nothing for me. You mean you don't have any more fucking wrestling matches? Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. I got you. Right. Yeah. God. You know, it, I, I, listen, I'm, I'm only telling you the story. I'm not, and I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter about it because being let go from that shit place that was back then was the best thing that ever happened to me, man. I miss a lot of guys there that I'm still in contact with that I'm not going to mention names, but are so agreeous with me that, dude, that, that was a hostile place to work, man, especially TVs, pay-per-views. I mean, the way that you, you know, we were pieces of trash, man. Well, my problem was Johnny Ace because he would threaten to fire me and always remind me that all the power that he had and that he can release me anytime. And then they, you know, when they call you like on a Sunday night before Raw and say, oh, creative has nothing for you. then you're fucking paranoid because you know how they release guys. They'd release 10, 20 at a fucking time, right? Like yeah. the the, uh, the spring cleaning after Mania, like everybody's like fucking worried if they got a job. I remember one time we had a fucking talent meeting, and Johnny's basically saying, "Where are you guys gonna go work? There's no way <laughs> to go work. Huh? Can't go anywhere. Go to Japan. No, Japan's not as good as it used to be. So like you're, you know what I mean? So yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was really toxic and fucked with your head mentally. It did. It did. I mean, I would say that was the most thing, man, was being mind fucked. You know what I mean?